Alright, well welcome to what is now part 5 of this Corvette Restoration C5 1998 series. If you haven't seen the other parts, I'll put them in the cards. You can go and have a look at them as a playlist for this car already. So, what we've done so far is all on those previous parts. I'm not going to bother recapping just now. But we're at a stage now when I'm waiting on some parts for the engine coming. I'm waiting on a new belt. I'm waiting on a couple of new tensioners coming. Because we've got a quite a bad engine squeal going on. Not at idle, just under load. So I've already replaced the tensioner and pulley here. This one, I've got a tensioner and a pulley to replace on the AC belt, which is down there. And I'm going to replace the idler pulley, which is somewhere in here. And put a new belt on it. I'm going to get a Continental Elite belt. Previously, I could get a gator back belt, but I think they're gone now. They don't make them anymore to try and reduce the squeal. So I've got both belts off just now because when I start the car, let it idle, let it get a temperature. There was no squeaking, no squealing, no belt slippage whatsoever. When I put the tyres on, I got the tyres put on, obviously took the car out of the garage and reversed it back in. That little bit of a load in reversing it back in caused the engine to high pitch squeal. So tested it out a little bit, came into the car, revved it, set it up at 2,500 RPM, and yes, it squeals like a pig. So what I did was to diagnose it, I took the little AC belt off first, put the main belt back on, ran it, accelerated again up to 2,500 RPM, or above, and it squealing again. So that's not it. That's not the problem. The two pulleys in there aren't making any noise. And they're quite stiff. This is the new tension that we've put on. And it's got no play in it whatsoever virtually. So it's, it's not the problem either. The belt, however. The big belt that's kind of lying loose down here. Just to take it off in full. This belt here. Was new. But I don't know how new. Because it was sitting in the trunk of the car. So, wait to go over this side. I can only guess that that belt is at least two and a half years old. Probably a lot older. And I've checked every other pulley here. And there's nothing obvious that's playing in the, the power steering pulleys down there. That's not making any noise either. And the crank pulley, from what I could see, wasn't wobbling. But if I'm brutally honest, I didn't really pay that much attention to it. So I may have to test that again. However, the idler pulley, the one that sits down, see if we can see it. Here's the hole for the idler pulley. There, right down there, right? Oh, for goodness sake, let's see. Right there. See a little shiny bit there? That's where the idler pulley sits get a better view there right see this above the power steering pulley there that's where the idler pulley sat now here is the old idler pulley for the main belt and as you can see it's completely lost its coating and here's the pulley that we'll replace it with which has completely got its coating so don't make a mistake though like i did but i needed it anyway is the other idler pulley on the car that looks like this is actually for the AC belt. As you can see, it's smaller than the one on the main belt, but they look very similar online. So I got both, that's the AC belt idler, and that's the main belt idler, and we replaced both of them and we replaced the tensioners as well. We saw the video earlier that I replaced the tensioner for the main belt. So if you're buying these in raw cloth or something, just be sure you're getting the one you need. Um, my AC belt idler didn't really need replaced. It wasn't squeaking, however, while I was in there, might as well just do it for all it costs, so that will future proof it a little bit. So let's go on and crack on and put this on, and we have a Continental belt. So the belt I got for this is this Continental Elite, I believe it's called. That's the kind of part number there, if you can see it, 406802, you can just see it through there. And this is a 240 belt, 2040 millimeter belt, 80.2 inches. And from what I've read online, this belt reduces the squeaking of the old belt. So they replaced the belt already. However, we still had the horrific squeal. So let's get the new tensioner pulley on, which is just a bit in here. It's just a screw on, about 37 pounds foot of torque to put it on. And I'll put the new belt on and fingers crossed that relieves our squeaking issue. 
So let's crack on with that. Right, so I find if you remove the air bridge, you can get into this pulley a lot easier. You can just reach around this side of your hand and just start turning it by hand at first, just to seat it in place. And you can get around the water pump, no problem. Don't need to remove anything else, but I removed the air bridge here. So you can see it. You could probably do this without removing it, but for all it takes, it just makes life easier. Okay, so let's tighten that up to 37 pounds foot and then let's put on the belt and fingers crossed we get no squeaks. All right, that's the new belt on. And you can see down there, there's also a new belt on the AC, which you can just see there on the pulley. You get a better view of that one here, the green writing. So two new belts and basically four new pulleys, tensioners and two idlers. So. Let's fingers cross this stops the screwing. Let's give it a shot. Right. So at idle, we've got absolutely not, no squeaks, no squeaks at idle whatsoever. We get a note of it. Mission success. Just had it out in the driveway and back in on a load. It was squealing like a pig beforehand. So whether or not it was a tensioner or this Continental belt, combination of both obviously, that's fixed it. I don't know what one specifically did it, but I don't care. That's it. It's done. The either needed done anyway. The belt needed done. Tensioners needed done. And we are squeal free. Excellent. We're so close, we're so close to getting this car back in the road now. Now I need to finish off this roof, as you can see I've polished some of it and not others, so I need to finish off this roof cosmetically. I think we've still got a quick right indicator flasher going on here, so I think we'll need to just put some new bulbs into these if we can. Uh, I don't know what one it is that's out, but there's something not right here. And then we're ready for MOT. Incredible. Let's crack on with this roof, get the car cosmetically sound, may give it a wash and a polish as well, for, fix that light and then we're good to go. All right, so what we'll do first of all is give this a little clean. We shall give it a clean. Now we're just gonna give it a spray down. The clean cloth first of all. And make sure there's no rubbish. We'll just do this in sections. First of all, just so that we know what we're doing here. We don't mess up. I don't think this roof will have been cleaned for quite some time. Certainly not been washed for a while. And there we are. Just going to get the detail brush and go down the water waves here just to make sure there's nothing comes out, which there is. Preparation is everything when you're doing something like this. I've done it in body panels loads and loads of times. This is a glass roof, so but the process is essentially exactly the same. Make sure it's as clean as you can. Make sure there's nothing sticking to it. And preparation is key. You have to sand off all of these nasty bits. Alrighty, let's take a closer look for you then. Right, okay. So, just clean out the waterways there, make sure there's no gunk or anything in them. And as you can see, the light shows up, the pretty horrific oxidation that's happened here. That's the whole thing pretty much clean. So let's get sanding. So what I'm going to start with is some, uh, probably about 320 grit sandpaper. Nothing too harsh, we'll just go very lightly, maybe a little bit heavier on the bits that I've got uh, completely flaky paint there. But basically, a light starting off coat to to sand it down with and I'm going to use my sanding block. Yeah, so I've put some 320 grit on the sanding block, we'll soak it down, we'll dip it in some water and make sure we're wet sanding at all times so that it's not going to create more work for us than we need to.
Right, so we're having to hit this section here a little bit harder. I can still feel the ridges on my fingertips of where the clear coat had peeled. So we've still got a couple of bits there. See it there? It's right above where the light is. There's some areas there that are still a little bit bumpy. Right there. So we'll keep hitting that we can until it becomes smooth. And what we've done is we've got most of those big kind of gougy marks out. Don't be fooled. If you want to do this properly, it's not a slow, it's not a quick process, I should say. It's a slow process. And if you don't do this bit right, any spray paint that you put on top is just going to look absolute garbage. So take your time with this. I certainly am. And I'll be going over this whole panel now with 320. Then probably moving up to, to show you what I've got here. 600 then into the thousands and maybe 2000 to finish off so we'll see how it looks after the 600 and 800 pass see how it looks after the 1000 grip pass or 1200 grip pass and then we might have to do a 2000 grip pass as well so yeah good bit of time spent doing this but it's worth it Six hundred. That's after eight hundred grit. That's after twelve hundred grit. And what the heck? I'm here. I'm going to do one more at two thousand. But you can see it's starting to look pretty, well, uniform if it'd be too far of a stretch, but it's getting to be a, a whole haze in general across the whole panel. So one more sit hit with the 2000 grit, and then we'll buff using the Meguiar's compound. Right, and that's now after 2000, as you can see, it's a much more consistent haze across the whole thing. And what we're going to do now is move on to the buffing pad and use some Meguiar's compound, which is this one. I'm going to switch between the orange pad and the medium firm ones. The orange one's kind of medium. This one's medium to firm. So we'll try it with that first. And I might switch on to the orange pad if it doesn't need the harder pad. So let's just try this and we'll do a section at a time and see how we go on. There's a first kind of initial pass, looking a bit murky, but coming up nicely, and I can actually see through it now. So, big difference from when you sand it, but it's starting to look better. You can actually see the reflection of the light now. Still got swirl marks, but we'll get most of them out if we keep polishing. So, it doesn't take five minutes this job. It's a tough job, and the coating on this seems to be extremely tough. So, let's plow on, and we'll get it to a mirror finish. So I had to do a little bit of a change of plan here. So once I cut everything back with the polishing pads and the compound polish, I just wasn't happy with the results at all. It just wasn't looking great. So what I did was I um, decided to wipe everything down and shoot it with a can of clear lacquer. So there's three coats of clear lacquer on this now. Unfortunately, my camera died and I was videoing the clear lacquer, but in general, I was kind of going 
uh, crossways on it, making sure the strokes were evenly nice and spaced out and right up to the end of the panel for one coat and then back down for the second coat and the third coat I went lengthways like that. And the result of that, which you've probably seen already, faffing about here in the video, is here. So this is the clear coat. And a lot of people panic when they put clear coat on, because it does always come out looking like this, from a spray can, certainly. Very hazy, very dull, very flat. So what I'm doing now is, as you can see, putting the finishing polish onto the bits between the green lines there. And there's my LED light in the clear coated bit. And there it is in the polished bit. Now I'm not finished polishing yet, but that's starting to look pretty good. We've got a little bit of a mirror like finish going on there. So there's a difference straight away. So I'm gonna finish polishing this section off and then we'll see how we go on. But essentially if I do that whole panel like that, it was looking good. But if I'm honest, and I sanded back the top coat of this, it needed the clear coat on top. And you need to clear coat it anyway because you're taking the protection off this glass roof. So let's crack on with this and we'll see how we can get. I'm not saying it's going to be a perfect mirror finish on this. It probably never will be, but we'll get it as good as we can for now. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so that's about, I don't know, 20 minutes on this section. You can actually see me now. Whereas in this one, I am nothing. I'm an invisible man. I'm covered in a cloaking device. You can't see a thing. So I think that's pretty good. You can see the definition of the LED light above me. And I think I'm going to stop there and just crack on with the rest of this because this is a very, very time consuming job. But see if I can get the whole thing to this standard. I am happy with that because when I got this, this roof looked as if it was ready for the bin. So let's continue on. We'll just do it in sections again. I'll move my tape up to about halfway. But don't be fooled. If you want to try this at home, it's not a quick process. It's not a quick polish. It's not a quick sanding. It's not a quick anything. It's, it's a time consuming process. It's taken me over the course of about four or five days. I've been coming in and out of this um, and amongst other things. So if I can get it to this level of finish, I'm happy with that for now. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so that's about oh, a good few hours of polishing with various levels of pad. That's the thicker pad that's um, coarser. And that's the one that's kind of medium to firm. So I've used that one just now, still on the compound. So I've got to put the finishing polish on it then we get rid of some of the holograms, but I am 90% happy with this compared to what it was at the start. So you can see me now, and it's not crystal clear. It's not absolutely perfect, but it is a way, a lot better than it was. There you go, you can see the car in it now, which is a big improvement. And I can actually, if I tip it up here, it's a bit, bit dusty on the inside, but I can see through it now. See that? That's the aim. That's what I wanted to be able to do, because when you get into this car before, you looked up and you thought it was cloudy. But now I can actually see everything through it with a decent reflection as well, which is the main aim of this, just to get it to that stage. So I think I'm pretty much at that stage now. And that is looking a lot better than it was when I first got the car. So I'm going to give it a finishing polish. I've got some, um, it's kind of like my two stage polish stuff. This is the ultimate finishing polish from Meguiar's. I'll use that using the softer pad, get rid of some of these kind of hologrammy bits. But essentially all the scratches and all that have gone pretty much. If you look really closely, you can maybe see one or two, but that is now looking like a black roof without any tarnishes or anything like that. So much, much better. It's a tough job though, like I said before, it's not quick and it's not easy to repair these. And this isn't even 100% repair, this is about 90 I would say. But good enough to go in the car and good enough 
for anybody coming along not to know what state it was in before. So let's put a final stage on a finishing polish and get it back on the car. I did start polishing this on the car. And that's the effect. It just sprays everywhere. So that's why I'm doing it down here. Plus my back was killing me trying to do it on the car as well. So excellent. I'm pretty pleased with that. Let's put the finishing polish on it, get a final look at it, and that'll do us on the roof. That'll be it done. that now reflections all over the place really concerning how this started I've still got a wee couple of bits to polish out here but concerning how this started that is much better than I'd actually anticipated finish wise that's really good I'm more than pleased with that and that is going back on the car I'm going to give it a ceramic coating as well I'm going to give it a final polish just by hand just to get rid of some of these little marks here hold on a second so there we have it that is so much better than I thought it was going to turn out given the fact that so much sand into them and look at that these areas are great and the whole thing is just looking so much better than it was before the fact I can see the car in it now is you know it's worth the effort to try to do this I could keep going with this to the nth degree and I could keep going with the polisher until it's absolutely spot on perfect, which I might do in the future. But for now, it's going to get put onto the car. I'm going to maybe put some wax or something or some sealant or something like that. I'm always going to ceramic coat it, but I might come back and do more polishing in the future. But for now, this is so much better than I thought it was going to be considering what we started with. So, oh, look at that. I will put in a picture of the before shot of this car, but look at that. Obviously, I need to wash the whole thing now, but the roof is looking spectacular. That is a really good finish, and I'm so pleased with that. That has been hours and hours of work to get to this stage, but well worth. Look at that. Hmm. Woo! Oh, yes. Right, now look at that, and from the inside, it's now pretty much crystal clear. Check it out. Look at that. When you first got it, you looked up, you just saw waves of clear coat, peeling, scratches and marks. That is superb. I'm so happy with that finish, we can't, I can't tell you. So, there we have it. Hours and hours of labour to go into that. Don't try it without a dual action polisher. Don't do it by hand. You're never going to get that finished by hand. Forget it. You need to do some sanding, wet sanding, all the grades that I've shown you and all the polishing that I've shown you. Hours and hours and hours. It's not a weekend job either. Don't don't show yourself. It's a long process to get to that. And 
I'm in the UK, so you can't exactly just go and get another one of these as easily as you could maybe in the US, but that was a, a good repair job. I'm really pleased with that. So that will wrap up this video. That's us pretty much there. Next video could be a driving video. We could be getting this thing on the road again and back to back to the way where it should be. I'm going to MOT'd in two weeks' time from releasing this video and I'll come back with another video to see if all the work we've done passes MOT. Fingers crossed. So hit the like button, comment below if you haven't done so, hit subscribe to keep up to date with these videos in the Corvette and more and I shall see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.